that, I guess. I'm Alfian Poon. I'll be your host for today. Oh, wait, what's this? There's echo somewhere. Okay, the echo's gone. Anyways, uh, here we have... Oh, that's not their right names. Alright, uh, this is their right name. Okay. Yeah, so we have Jerome Wong versus Brian Kong here. Jerome Wong uh, looks like he's on Teamer Energy, while Brian Kong, uh, he has Search of Ascanta and Disallow in his graveyard, so I assume it's some sort of control deck, which I think has a good matchup against Teamer Energy. But Jerome seems to be able to have established his board well, Brian Kong does not have any counter spells at all. Does he? Oh, he's going to allow that. Okay. So he's most likely going to glimmer this turn. Look for Sheltering Suns, I guess. Sheltering Suns and a mountain. Did he get it? Nope. That sensor and Hunter's Lightning. Okay, to the bottom. Draw two. A Torrential Gearhawk and then a Braid. Okay. So, Brian Kong here. And quite a bad spot. I forgot to turn on the timer too. It's actually at 44 right now. Alright, so Brian deciding if he wants to put it to his graveyard <coughs> but yeah put it to his graveyard okay then it flips quite a bad spot here for Brian Kong uh, Jerome's board just devastatingly wide right now uh, Brian Kong is either board wipe or bust Hey DX EX1, yes, I am casting alone. I feel very sad. Wow, casting alone feels feels very lonely. Mm. At least I'm not in Brian Kong's shoes right now. Getting wrecked by Teamer Energy. So uh Brian He's able to gear out and block block one and then gets a removal to take one more. But then he would be down to one I think. Call make down? Nah, he has things to do. So a braid onto the rogue refiner. Fail push onto the serve the conduit. This is kind of bad. It's going to create one more top tier, and it's going to be exactly lethal for 5. Unless Brian does have something, which I doubt he does. Oh, Jerome has uh, Hunter's Lightning too. No, not Hunter's Lightning, sorry. Blossoming Defense. Wait, isn't that lethal? It's 5 damage. It's 3 plus... 3 plus 2? Huh. Alright, I'm just gonna let them play it out. Because I'm a horrible person. Go enjoy Tola Simi Standard. Hey man, some people... What, some people like watching live Standard. And uh, yep, Brian Kong just scoops it up. Well, I hope he has a good sideboard full of uh, full of board wipes. Maybe a few sheltering suns. Chandra's defeat might be good here against Glorybringer, I guess. 
Jerome probably going to go play more resilient threats. Maybe Vizier of many faces, which can survive twice, I guess. Appetite for the unnatural as well for the Torrential Gearhawks. Oh, hi Kelvin. Yes, yes, it is a rule infraction. But here at higher standards at Grilga Games, we have no standards whatsoever. Oh, I see Vraska in his sideboard. Maybe he's playing a. Maybe he's playing four color. Anyways, if you're just watching Grilga Games, watching our stream, watch out. Meanwhile, Mick actually pauses the game to fix it. <laughs> well, I'm not Mick. I'll just let it slide. Jerome probably would have won that anyway, regardless. But yeah, if you're just catching our stream, do check us out uh, on Tuesdays. First, you forget who I am. I now you don't enforce rules. Tusk, tusk. <laughs> yeah, anyways, yeah, if you're watching us tonight, we have our standard stream every Tuesday, 8pm uh, Singapore time as well as modern on Wednesdays 8pm Singapore time sometimes on the weekends we have other stuff like win a box tournaments PBTQs and all that stuff oh, hey Ryan Low. looks like Jerome's done But Ryan really needs to consider his sideboard options here. If he doesn't keep a board wipe for the Waller Virtuoso threat, uh, he might just die due to that. And also, he needs to counter the right spells, I guess. He probably needs to le let let some small stuff go through, but. Long Tusk Cup, you probably want to counter that. Servant of the Conduit, I think you let that through. So, yeah, Jerome Wong on Tima Energy. Brian Kong, looks like he's on Grixis Control. I saw the red. So, how was your day guys? My day was just full of work and doctor appointments, I guess. Tordon magic la, waste time. On the contrary, every time I go on a tour, on like other, other countries, the first thing I do is play their FNM. I go to Japan, I go to Harare, I play the FNM. I go to Indonesia, I find, I use the wizard locator, find, find a store, play their FNM. I like, uh, diversifying my opponents. Yeah, that's the word. I'm having an exams. Wait. Oh, good luck for your exams. Hope you do well. Oh. Is Brian still sideboarding? <laughs> High five off. Definitely Kelvin, definitely. Magic magic in every every country. Magic in Japan is quite fun though. Uh if you play their FNMs, their the deck quality is actually quite relaxed no none of that tier one shit 
they're all just playing jank decks. If you want to play like competitive Japanese magic, you just go to their their longer tournaments. I'm pretty sure they have yeah, I'm pretty sure they have like Hyria tournaments where people actually play r r real tiered decks. The language barrier playing in Japan. Tried playing Vanguard and Weish was there once. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I guess those two games would particularly be quite decently big in Japan. And Magic, Magic is a universal language. You see a braid, everyone knows what it does. You see Tarantra Gearhow, everyone knows what it does. You see Counter Spell, everyone knows what it does. So I had I had quite a good time. What's what's the best tip you can provide to get better competitive magic? All right, so I learned this in, I learned this quite a while ago. But if you want to play competitive magic, you please please bring a good deck. Don't bring like some half big shit deck. That's 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 already like that's already like uh, handicapping yourself. Essentially, just make just make a good meta call deck. Uh, a a bad player can win a tournament if he's playing like an absolutely monster of a deck. I know this because my brother won won a tournament. Won, who he, my brother won a GPT back then when they were existed. Just because he made the right meta call. Or you can just play a deck and just play a deck forever just get good at it uh mtgo is also one of the places where you can improve at magic that's pretty uh, you need to sink in some money on the ticks though well that's some of the conduit a turn late from jerome oh wait no his first one got fail pushed Alright, here comes Long Task Card. And Glimmer of Genius. I assume this is uh, in response to the Long Task Card because the server of the conduit isn't attacking. But Glimmer on 4 is definitely pretty good. He left his some of the conduit untapped though, so um oh he's leaving up the gate. Okay. Um I see Glorybringer in Brian's hand. If he is able to play that this turn, that would be pretty bad for Jerome. So here comes Glorybringer. Most likely gonna swing and exert on the long task cup. Now that it's unable to pump itself sufficiently to survive the guy bring us 4 damage yeah you, you can't tilt against opponents drawing good stuff and uh, mana flooding it you have to pl uh, that's why grinders exist man some pros they they get mana flooded and they their opponents get good draws but they still manage to win that's what makes them that's what make them pro yeah here comes bristling hydra one of the many devastating threats brian will have to handle because it does have hexproof when you act activate it so a braid onto the server of the conduit brian's plan here might just be to race with glory bringer But uh, Jerome has Harness Lightning for the Glorybringer, so 
Brian might have has it, Brian might have his work cut out for him. So, Bristling Hydra does go through. Yeah, and the Hunter's Lightning does go on the Glory Bringer. Does this at during his main phase, of course, to avoid uh, Brian having mana. So he can't really do anything about his Glory Bringer being Hunter's Lightning. So now Brian has uh, quite a bit of mana to play around with. And uh, I think I see Hour of Devastation, but. Uh, Jerome has Nick get in his hand. It's going to be quite a tough game for Brian. <laughs> it's also easy to tell which player it's net deck to. Like not seeing the proper line of play. I mean, yeah, net decking is one thing. But knowing how to play the deck properly is another thing. Like, some people I know, they... They just pick up rent just pick up Ramanat Raid because it's the easiest deck. But in the end, Ramanat Raid still you, you still need a decent amount of what decent amount of, decent amount of knowledge as to what you're doing. You can't just unga bunga go face twenty four seven. You need to control the board sometimes too. Cough Danny, cough. <laughs> anyway, here comes Sky Sovereign, which does get disallowed. And here comes Opt. Scry one, draw one. <laughs> Brian Kong draws here. He plays search for Askanta. Alright. That's gonna help him. It's gonna probably gonna flip next turn. It's gonna help him get uh, that much needed card advantage now that Jerome is full of cards in his hand okay here comes Wola Virtuoso uh, it resolves surprisingly huh. Brian Kong opting not to use the disallow in his hand Hana sliding onto the Wola Virtuoso plasmic defense here so I would probably harness lightning again on the stack and save my disallow. Yep. So here comes harness lightning. But unfortunately for Jerome, does not have enough mana for negate. Does not have the blue for spell pierce. But does create a top tier. Do a lot of pro players play like FNF at your store? Uh, okay, actually, uh, most of the pro players, I uh, I don't see them at stores very often because they're often on MTGO practicing there instead because it's more convenient for them and much easier to find uh, opponents on MTGO rather than in F the events in store. So that's probably how they become pro, I guess. They... At in the end of the day, the highest standard of gameplay you can find in Magic is probably on MTGO. Which is why people go there, I guess. Oh, Torrent should kill help, but... I think the only local well-known... Yeah, Kelvin Chu. Definitely Kelvin Chu. They uh, pre said that they couldn't make it day two though, uh, Singapore for the nationals. But now Brian Kong is gonna have to deal with two flying totters, so that might be a problem. Jerome draws.
All right, hold on a moment, guys. Let me just share this in group. Oh. Oh well. Yeah, this store is in Singapore, yeah. So here comes Torrential Gear Hub from Brian's side. <laughs> gonna get a uh, Glimmer of Genius. Gonna rather f uh, put his put his chances on finding board w two two board wipes or two removals for the topter rather than just getting a single removal for one topter which I wouldn't say is the wrong move but a, a bit a bit riskier so that's use search for Ascanta I mean use Ascanta there because it did transform Sautering Suns yeah he finds it Alright, Brian draws. This might be where he starts turning the corner. Uh, because Jerome... Uh, where's his hand? Does he have cards in his hand? Yeah, you don't really have to play against Platinum Pros. It would be good at the game. Honestly, right, if, uh, if, you, if you know what you're doing, you could probably beat pros at the game because the game has enough variance where where uh, normal regular average players are able to beat uh, pro players so yep sorting sun does resolve after disallow counters the negate and torture gearhawk now going to provide a clock for brian kong gonna quickly withhold jerome's health down what Jerome needs right now is like a Vizier of Many Faces. But I'm not sure if he runs that. Now that you guys mentioned it, I feel like getting a... Get, buying some ticks on MTG so I can actually play there. Damn. Alright, Brian draws there. I'm, I'm I'm gonna do it, man. I've always wanted to do it. I I just I just wanna be good at the game, man. So Torrential Gearhawk goes in for five. Rip value. <laughs> Oh, here comes Busy of Many Faces, but uh, on Brian's side of the table instead of on Jerome's side, which is pretty bad and probably s does spell the end of the g uh, end of the game for Jerome. Uh, Road Refiner, the draw for Jerome Wong. Not sure if it's enough to save him though. Essence Scatter onto the Road Refiner. Here comes another Road Refiner. And here comes another Essence Scatter. And uh, I think, yeah, Brian Kong just swings in with both and he wins the game. So, game is now 1 is to 1. Uh, both players tied, and this last game is probably going to decide who wins this round. Very nice.
Ah, could teach me how to play good standard. Now I'll probably ask Chun Hao. Or Jeffrey. Yeah, one of those two guys. Oh, they're going back to their sideboards. Doomfall, Duress. Does Brian want to put in hand attack in this matchup? He might want to actually. Nah, he, he goes against it. I wonder what Jerome is taking out. Uh, if Jerome has Carnage Tyrant in his deck, now is definitely the time to put it in. How would Brian deal with a Carnage Tyrant actually? There's no way, right? Yeah, Chunhao's pretty good at the game. Mm. Oh, look at Brian playing his Grand Blue Fantasy on his phone. What BM? I don't think he has green. No, I mean for Jerome. Jerome needs... Jerome needs Carnage Tyrant. But uh, Essence Scatter, Vraska's Contempt on Brian's side. Uh, he pr Brian probably has Vraska's Contempt. But we just haven't seen it yet. I wonder if Jerome has uh, Planeswalkers in his deck too. Since Planeswalkers are the bane of control. Well, now that they have Vraska's content, which does target Planeswalkers, maybe not so much. Yeah, that's true. Raskar's Contempt is pseudo hero's downfall. <laughs> yeah, it, I think the fact that Torrential Gearhawk is in the same is in the same standard rotation as Raskar's Contempt just makes Raskar's Contempt a bit better because uh, just because you are able to flash it back for free, even though it's four mana. Torrential Gearhawk feels like it broke the format slightly. Uh, I actually disagree with that because uh, there are quite a lot of cards that go against go against the, the control decks. 
Torture Gear was exactly what Control needed. Otherwise, Control would be a bit too weak without Torture Gear. Out. It's the definitive, uh, definitive answer to all of Control's problems, where you need a bomb and something that can generate a lot of value or something that can deny your opponent's value. I think Torture Gear Hulk, uh is better than Snap Custom Mage? Question mark, question mark. I mean, in this, if Snap Custom Mage, if you see a Snap Custom Mage and a Torrential Gear Hulk in standard, so if, 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 if Snap Custom was in the same standard as Torrential Gear Hulk, I would play Torrential Gear Hulk over the Snap Custom Mage. Because otherwise, I have no finishes. Or you could just play Snap Custom Mage and can like run in like uh, other other end game cards like more, maybe some planeswalkers. Watsy wanted to destroy control as an arch type. Yeah, that's a horrible idea, man. Come on. Why would you want to do that? Control is like everyone's favorite arch type. Yeah, that's true. That's right, the XX. Oh, game started. Rogue will find the uh, the play here from Jerome. Looks like Brian has a whole lot of lands in his hand. Plays swamp and passes the turn. Swings in for three. Ouch. And place another long task up. Doesn't look like oh, fail push, the F and M one. And it's gonna cycle his canyon slow. Draw into an eater hub. He's gonna need an answer to that uh road refiner sooner or later. Otherwise, it's just gonna chip in for three damage every time and uh three. It's not exactly a weak number. Sky Sovereign on Jerome's side, also quite scary. He might be playing it now. Okay, so he plays the Sky Sovereign. Does Brian have the counter spell for this? He does not. Oh man, that's so bad. It resolves. Oh my god. Okay, uh, things are looking really bad for Brian right now. He has the Essence Scatter in his hand, but uh, the Sky Sovereign isn't a creature on the stack. It's a vehicle artifact. Oh, uh, Jerome draws here. Harness Lightning the draw. Watsy stop printing good counter spell and removal. I I like to disagree with that. There's like fail push, harness lightning. Uh a braid? A braid is pretty good removal. So Brian draws, draws it to a disallow, a turn too late, unfortunately. But now at least he has a uh, six mana. Alright, so he's gonna crew the sky sovereign and attack. 
This is the part where Brian flashes in the gear hub. Nope, it doesn't have any removal in his graveyard. So this might be the end of the game here. It, okay, so flashes in Torrential Gear Hub. It's gonna use Opt. Scry. A braid? I think he's looking for that a braid. Does he find it? Yes, no. Honest Lightning. Oh man, Hunter's Lightning is a bit stronger than Lightning Strike, I think, in the proper, in a proper deck. Like in the energy deck. Hunter's Lightning is, I think, quite a busted card. I mean, yeah, Fill Push is not that good in standard. It gets rid of Long Tusk Cups and... Serve to Conduits, maybe, but... Otherwise... Is otherwise you it's not good for much because you can't really What was I talking about again? Oh yeah, you can't really tr trigger revolt as easily in modern as you can in standard. Wait, I meant it the other way around. <laughs> so I think Brian here might might want to take the L here. Yeah, Silence the Believer that Fautong Invocation was like complete, was the best thing ever. Uh, let's not forget Draconic Raw. Draconic Raw was really strong in DTK. So, what is Jerome gonna do now? No doubt, of course, uh, Brian has Essence Scatter in his hand. Oh, Jerome passes the turn. Okay. So what Jerome needs now is to draw his uh, Carnage Tyrant to end the game. Yeah, I think no. I I think the energy mechanic is just. I think the en energy mechanic is destroying standard variety right now. I'm really not sure about the energy. Yeah. Okay. Essence scatter, negate essence scatter, crew the sky sovereign and hit it. Crew sky sovereign, hit for little. Oh, no, Locust God has a uh, flying. Uh, oh, I, I think our stable lengths look pretty cool. Yeah, energy is definitely oh, dominating standard a bit too hard. If you ask me, I think they should ban a tune with Ether. <laughs> that would like completely cripple, cripple the energy decks. So what is Brian gonna do here? Taps four. Doesn't tap four. Is he thinking of going for the Vizier of Many Faces? Might be. But uh, it's not really going to do much for him. I think he just loses here. Nothing he can really do. The Vizier is going to copy the Bristling Hydra, which won't do much because Bristling Hydra is going to crew the Sky Sovereign and 
just swinging for little. Alright, so he does go for the Vizier of Many Faces. Do note that the uh, Vizier's effect can't be... isn't affected by Hexproof, so... Because... I think there's a rule against this, hold on. I'm not sure how to explain it. Vizier of Many Faces... Ah uh, yes, you may have Vizier of Many Faces enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield. So it doesn't really target the creature, but... Oh, what do I do? Oh my gosh, this is not supposed to happen. Okay, that, that feature is a bit busted. But yeah. Jerome here takes the win over Brian Kong. Uh, kind of a close game. I think Brian didn't have the right draws to turn the game around at the right time. Uh, Sky Sovereign was definitely a problem for Brian. Not having the braid really did hurt him. So anyway, yeah, that's round one of uh, higher standards at Gregor Games. Do come, do uh, do stay tuned for round two. We'll be we'll be back in just a bit. In the meantime, I'll just I'll just put up a replay. Yeah. Hello everyone, welcome back to the main story quest line here at Grey Ogre Games. My name is Mick, I'm one of your hosts alongside the future pro, Alfian Poon. Hey, what's up? Alfian, why you keep messing up with the with the with with the the layout of the, oh, the thing? Sorry, I had to why 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 no, why why? Okay, okay, no, oh, Hello everyone and welcome to our monthly winner box tournament here at Grey Ogre Games. My name is Mick. I'm one of your hosts. One of your hosts for today. Anyway, we're watching or you're watching the monthly winner box tournament. Uh, and this round or this six rounds are gonna be sealed. So yeah, gotta enjoy. If you love that limited action like I do, uh, you're gonna enjoy this uh, this tournament. Here we're watching the match here between Tim Robs. And oh, here we go. Tim Robs and uh, Yu Hang Yao. Uh, Yu Yu Hang, I think. Yi Hang, Yi Hang, Yi Hang. Oh man, I'm trying to do a few things uh, at the same time. Uh, I'll do. I'll, I guess I'll do that later. Okay. So, uh, Yi Hang here looks like he's playing a black white vampires deck. Uh, able to drop an Adanto Vanguard as well as the uh, 1 3 Flyer on the battlefield. Uh, I forget what's the name. I, I need to look all these cards up. But uh, Tim looks like he's playing a uh, ostensibly mono blue, but uh, probably has. Oh, sorry, it's a blue green, not mono blue. Those forests look like they are islands, which is why I like those forests too. Uh, but here gets a master of the streams, I think, and here we go.
那个 ，sorry， Herald of， 呃、uh, ，Herald of Secret Streams， that's the card， 呃、uh,。Creatures you control with plus one plus one counters can't be blocked, and here drops a. Well, these are man lot of lot of card names that you have to remember, uh, for these cards. Uh, enters the battlefield. Uh, what's his name? Sailor of Means for three mana. It's a one four. No, this is not Sailor of Means. This is not Sailor of Means. This is the five mana guy. And there's a battlefield, and then you get two treasure tokens. Uh, prosperous pirates. That's the one. Prosperous pirates. Um, it's a three four. Let me let me bring it up. There we go. Prosperous pirates. When it enters for five mana, when it enters the battlefield, choose, uh, create two colorless treasure artifact tokens. Uh, with the tap, sacrifice this artifact at one mana, uh, color to your mana pool. And it looks like, wow, uh, Yi Hang here has been able to drop a, uh, mark of, uh, mark of, uh, something something. The one that gives it lifelink, plus two plus two and lifelink onto the Adanto Vanguard, which means that every time it attacks, it's going to be a 5-5. Five, five. Uh, plus, uh, sorry, plus three. Sorry, going to be six one six three, and you can pay four life, and it gains uh, it gains life link. Mark of the vampire. That's the one. Plus two, plus two, and a life link. Okay, Tim on the other side of the table drops a. Wow. Well, okay. Yeah, uh, that's the end of the game, I think. Uh, Tim here also has a Tishana, a voice of thunder, but uh, doesn't really matter because uh, Yi Hang here has just a more aggressive deck, a violently more aggressive deck, and this game is over in less than five minutes, and that's really fast. That is crazy, crazy fast. So man, uh, Tim. Tim looks like he's not gonna sideboard in anything. Has nothing to sideboard. I think. Well, we didn't see a lot of removal from uh from Tim's side. You know, just uh bounce spells or even uh, simple creatures that have plus one plus. You know, they give plus one plus one counters. Uh, but Yi Hang here, on the other hand. You know, very very strong out the gates. Able to drop the Adanto Vanguard, uh, you know, on turn two with the Skyblade of the Legion and two Skyblades of the Legions with the Mark of the Vampire, and becomes a very strong combination of cards to take down Tim. So, let's see going into round two. Oh, let's let's put up the score here. There we go. Score now is a zero one to Yi Hang. A one zero to Yi Hang. Yeah, sealed is sealed is another beast, I think. Uh, but the sealed in sealed in Ixalan is very interesting because even if you're low on removal, it can still be, you know, you can still push out and uh, do quite well. Uh, So yeah, all right. If you're just joining us, you're watching the monthly winner box here at Grey Ogre Games. My name is Mick. I'm your host for today. And uh, watching match here between Tim Robs and uh, Yao Yao Yi Hang, and it's a sealed tournament. So sealed is well, we don't have any deck archetypes, and uh, of course, it's only you know six six Ixalan boosters. Uh, but that can be that you know the, the game is very wide and again you know there's a lot of decks that you can build uh but generally i think sealed is is a bit faster i don't think there's a there's a very good control deck in uh in the sealed format for Ixalan. Well, but we'll see we'll see 
Uh, Tim here with okay. He's got he's got lands. He's got spells. That's uh, all great and good. And he he goes first and passes the turn. Daring saboteur is a nice follow up play from uh, Tim. Let me bring up a uh, daring saboteur. Oh, is it daring sleuth? No, daring saboteur. That's it. Turn two. Daring Saboteur is a 2 mana 2 one, it's a rare, so this this card is pretty good. Uh, it For 3 mana, you can give it the ability that it cannot be blocked, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card, and if you do, discard a card. So it's got that looting effect uh, all, all wrapped up in it. But, uh, but Yi Hang here, able to put a Skyblade of the Legion onto the battlefield so it's a 1-3 and if Tim here wants to attack uh, he will have to sacrifice you know his his turn Tishana's Wanderer I believe that's the that's what the call, card is called also hits the battlefield yeah Tishana's Wanderer is a 3 mana uh, let me oh come on Tishana's Sorry, not Wanderer, Tishana's Wayfinder, 3 mana for 2-2. Two, two. When it enters the battlefield, it explores. And uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the explore mechanic, you reveal the top card of your library and then put... Uh, uh, if it's a land, you put it in your hand. Otherwise, you put a plus one plus one counter on it. Then you decide whether you want to put it back on the top of uh, on your library or you put it into the graveyard. So uh, if it's if you know if it's a non-creature spell that you don't want, you can put it into the graveyard. Otherwise, you're drawing a card. Uh, so essentially, explore kind of draws you maybe half a card, draws you a land for sure, uh, and is able to mill away stuff that you don't really want. And uh, it gives Tishana Tim here gives Tishana the flying, and punches him. Finally, punches him for three points of damage. Whereas uh, Yi Hang here. He's got uh, the Ruthless Knave, I believe. That's what, it's, that's what the card is called. Uh, let me bring that up for you. There we go. Ruthless Knave. Ruthless Knave. 3 mana for 3, 2. Uh, the Daring Saboteur can easily trade for the Ruthless Knave, but uh, Ruthless Knave has a really cool ability where you can pay 3 mana and sacrifice a creature. It creates 2 colorless treasure tokens, and then you can sacrifice 3 of the tre treasures, and you draw a card. Pretty good, huh? Uh, but uh, Yi Hang here able to give both his guys flying with the arrow saw and beats him with the ruthless knife for what, four, five, five points of damage, bringing Tim down to five. River Harrow's boon, maybe nope. Okay, gonna go with another explore creature, and I don't think this is very useful at all right now. Yes, he decides to uh, mill it away, and now he has a one four blocker for for anything on the ground. And I believe Tim here should attack. Maybe attack. No, he decides to pass the turn. Okay, so go on the defense with his Tishana's Wayfinder. Especially with a River Harrow's Boon in his hand. Uh, which will enable him to grow one of uh, one of his creatures. As well as, the, uh, as well as one of his Merfolks. There we go. River Herald's Boon. For 2 mana, it's an instant speed. Put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature and a plus 1 plus 1 counter on up to 1 target merfolk. So, pretty good stuff, I would say. Uh, Yi Hang here lacking uh, 1 mana. Wow, he's got green in his deck. Okay, I just realized that uh, he put he put down some, uh, some green stuff. Okay, Hammer Skull. Hits the battlefield, and when Hammer Skull attacks, he gets to tap down a creature, and he'll probably use it to um, he'll probably use it to tap down the flyer. And Tim then decided not to fire off the uh, River Harrow's boon just yet. 